All right. We're going to continue our discussion of our, our two force laws and the right-hand rules for magnetism, but we're going to concentrate a little bit more about talking about the force on a wire. So if we remember um, our equation for that, the force, the magnetic force on a wire is equal to the current in that wire times the length of the wire crossed with the magnetic field. <clears throat> so, and again, the force goes with our thumb. The current times the length goes with our pointer finger, and the magnetic field still goes with our middle finger. And we're going to try to do this in the most non-offensive way possible. Non-offensive. So, looking at that, let's pretend that we have a magnetic field coming out of the page, because that's what dots mean. The magnetic field is coming out of the page regardless of what I would have had you believe yesterday. So we have the magnetic field coming straight out of the page. And we have a wire in that magnetic field, and the current in the wire is going in this direction. Now, for us, the current means positive charges have a velocity in this direction. So we could still think about it in terms of the other right-hand rule that we used before. But just looking at this situation, the magnetic force on the wire will lift it up. <clears throat> and that's all there is to it. Now, um, it's going to get more complicated if, if we find a situation in which, let's say we have a magnetic field this way. That's our magnetic field. And let's just for fun say that our magnetic field is 10 Teslas. That's what we use for the magnetic field. And we have a wire that is running this way in my magnetic field. I have a current I. Let's say that's equal to 2 amps that way. And the length of my wire is 0 0.02 meters the length of the wire in the magnetic field. That's the only part that's there. So if we want to look at the force here, again, doing our right-hand rule, the force acting on this thing, we'll use, we'll use green, the force acting on this is into the page. But calculating the force, ILB times the sine of the angle in between them, is going to depend on this angle. Uh, that looks pretty close to 30 degrees to me. So this force would be equal to the current 2 amps times the length 0.2 meters times 10 tesla times the sine of 30 degrees. Pretty straightforward. That force comes out to be 2 newtons. So what we could do is think of ways to increase the force and how to decrease the force. And we'll discuss those in class tomorrow just as something to talk about. Now, why would we talk about force on wires? Well, because we can apply a torque to a loop of wire because of the forces acting on it. So let's say we have... Um, Let's so say we have our magnetic field, do a light color. So we have a magnetic field of 5 tesla pointed this way. Let's put a square loop of wire inside the magnetic field. Square loop of wire, the side S equal to let's say 0.5 meters. So all the way around it's 0.5 meters. And let's say in that wire we, we have a current of 2 amps running all the way around. And we want to know about the torque or the forces acting on each piece of the wire. So we're going to number them 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1. Looking at 1 we have current running this way, running up. So 
we put our pointer finger up, our middle finger with a magnetic field. And so one thing that we know is that the force on one is into the page. And the magnitude of that force is equal to the current, 2 amps, times the length, 0.5 meters, um, times the magnetic field, 5 teslas, times the sine of the angle in between those, which is 90. So the force is into that page with a magnitude of 2, 5, 5. Um, the magnitude of 5 newtons. And that's force into the page. Looking at two, force is equal to zero because they are parallel. The current is going this way. The magnetic field is going this way. They're going in the same direction. That force is equal to zero. Looking at three, I can see that my force, if the current is down, and the magnetic field is still to the right, I see that that force is... out of the page and then it also has a magnitude of 5 newtons and then looking at 4 well again I see that force is equal to 0 so I have a force into the page on this side and a force out of the page on this side it's gonna make that thing spin and if we want to know the magnitude of that, well, it's going to spin around this center axis. So if we want to look at the torque, if we recall, torque is force times a radius. Well, we've got two forces acting on it, so our net torque is going to be force 1, 5 newtons, acting at a distance of 0.25 meters. Right? This is going to be my axis. 5 newtons pushes into the page here. So that's a torque that's going to cause it to spin a certain direction. Well, the other one is a force of 5 newtons, again acting at 0.25 meters, um, at 90 degrees to that 0.25 meters. And this one's going to cause it to spin in the same direction, so we add them together. Uh, so looking at that, it gives me a torque of no, not zero. 2.5 meters times newtons. And, and if we had the moment of inertia, we could figure out the angular acceleration of that. But this kind of torque is what makes motors go around. All right, what we have here is a clip of a, a homopolar motor, and we looked at this last year, and we'll look at it again uh, if we have time in class tomorrow. But what we've got is a tiny little um, tiny little magnet down there, a little neodymium magnet, and then a battery. This guy's going to drop onto that this, this copper wire, so we're going to have a current running in the wire through the battery, and I guess we're going to see what happens. So, as it connects, the thing spins and spins and spins and spins around. Now, the reason it's doing that is because of the torque applied to the wire because of the magnetic field. So, we're going to draw that in really, really quickly. So, we have a magnet down here, a north end and a south end. We have a wire that connects from the top down to the bottom and another wire that connects from the top down to the bottom yes I know that looks like a heart now if we look at the magnetic field here it sort of loops around that magnet that's not a great drawing of magnetic field loops but it loops around that magnet and we can see the magnetic field pointing in this direction and the current, that's the positive side of the battery, pointing in this direction, downward. Now, at this point, okay, we have a magnetic field, the middle finger pointing over to the right, current pointing down. So we have a force on this side 
And that's out of the page. Likewise, we have a magnetic field over current down. So the magnetic field is over and the current is down. And we see that force pointing into the page. So that causes a torque just like we were looking at before. It's not a uniform magnetic field, but we have this sort of constant torque acting on this loop of wire. Um, that's what an engine is. So we'll go back to watching that go, spinning, which is, I just think, cool. So, and then here's a fun shape. If we can make that tomorrow, I'd be thoroughly impressed. But it looks fun, but it's the same idea. It's just magnetic torques acting on a current carrying wire.